Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this episode I've got a bit of a treat for the viewers in the US because this is a filter that is widely available in the US and as a double bonus it's a hang on the back filter. This one is the CKM Tidal 110. Now I'm just going to quickly read off the back of this box as to what is included. These are the various features of this particular filter. Maintenance alert device, reversible filter cover, CKM matrix biomedia, bottom foam for the mechanical filtration, filter basket, flow regulation dial, aerating return flow, surface skimmer intake, leveling dial, low wattage self priming pump and that pump has apparently got a self cleaning impeller which I've never heard of before, a heater holder, pump housing, dual intake regulation dial and telescopic intake tube. So we've got quite a lot to look at with this filter. Okay that's it there. I'll just sit it there so you can get a good close look at it. And the first thing that I noticed is that this is actually manufactured by a company called Sicke. S-I-C-C-E. And they're an Italian company and they actually make that huge pressure filter that I've got in my garden that's marketed by Lotus in this country. So I have never seen one of these anywhere with a Sikki name on it, only with a Seachem name on it. So to find out that they are manufacturing, on the face of it, decent filters for other companies is a good thing. I've just noticed on the side of here it says large filter basket holds filtration media of your choice brackets or parentheses no cartridges no cartridges is a great idea because these things generally rely on cartridges which end up costing a fortune and they tend not to be very effective for a company to go ahead and say on the box this filter basket can be used with your own media is a really refreshing thing because most companies will only push their own media, whether it's good or bad. I've just noticed we haven't got the light on there. The doctor is in. Okay, I'll leave that there, bring the camera in, and let's take a look at what has come in this particular filter. This was sent to me by a guy called Chris. Thank you very much, Chris. And without people like you, I wouldn't have the access to the vast range of filters that I do have. Although looking at it from a financial point of view, it would be worth me just buying second-hand filters, shooting a video on them, and then selling them again. Because filling all these filters up with filter media and posting them back is costing me a lot of money. But it's all for a good cause. And that cause is to get the information about how these filters work and if they can be improved, how they can be improved. Get all that information out there for you guys to share. Look at the length of that cable. That's got to be knocking on for 3 metres. Normally you get a 1.5 metre cable which is about 5 feet. Sometimes even less. That has got a hell of a good cable. Right then. Let's lift this reversible lid off. I'm not actually sure how you would reverse it. Can it go on that way I don't think. Anyway, that is the maintenance indicator. It's basically just a little piece of plastic that sits in the water down here. When the water level rises, this rises. So if you see that sticking up, you know that everything's clogged in here and it needs cleaning out. Okay, that there is our flow regulator. And that dictates the outlet of the pump. Got a little detail on there, so less to more. So if you want more, just turn it there, and that is the full output. And this thing here is our media basket, which actually lifts out, which is a cracking idea. And the only thing that that has actually arrived to me with is a very coarse pad, 
which looks like it's seen a lot of muck. Ordinarily, there'd be a bag of CK Matrix on top of that, and then available space to put whatever you want on top. So that's good. That means you can lift that out, take it away, and clean this lot out. Now I think at this point it's worth going over just where the water comes in. So it comes in here through this telescopic shaft with the intakes here, but it also comes in here which acts as a surface skimmer and you can adjust the various draw between these two points with that. I'll just take that off and let you see what that does. There you go. So if you had that knocked off it would mean that nothing was coming in here and everything was coming in here. Likewise, if you open that right up, most of the water would be drawn from the bottom of the tank and you'd only get a little bit coming in through the skimmer. Now in there is the pump. That's a little bit tricky to get off, but it does come off. So there's our pump fixed to the bottom of the unit. And in there, is the self-cleaning impeller. And now I don't believe for a minute that's self-cleaning. If you had blanket weed or something and it went in there, stringy stuff, it's gonna get clogged. But because it's got multiple blades on there, it will chop up anything that comes into it a lot finer than if you only had, say, three or four blades on there. So that's a good bonus as well. Incidentally, this pump is up to 2,000 litres an hour, which is a hell of a flow rate on a hang on the back filter. And 2,000 litres an hour is 450 gallons per hour, so, you know, that's going to turn your tank over pretty well. Get that put back on there. Put the intake back on there. So that's where our water comes in, in the front. It then goes up the inside and it heads down into the bottom of our filter, right into the bottom there. And the shape of that enables the water to be funneled all the way down to the bottom. It then goes through the bottom of the tray, up through our foams and media and whatever else we've got in there, over the lip and back out to our tank. This little dial here allows us to set this to get it sitting level on the side of our tank. So I think that's pretty much run through all the different features of this thing. I actually like the fact that it's just a single piece unit with a removable tray. You know, you can just leave this thing fixed on the back of your tank all the time, turn it off, lift this tray out, take it away and clean it. It's good. Yeah, so really as, as far as actually upgrading it or adding stuff to it, we can really take that out of the equation. This is the thing that we're going to be concentrating on because that's where the action's going to happen. That's going to do our mechanical and our biological filtration. Actually, just one note on the intake. If you're having it set to draw a lot of water in here, if it's pulling close to 2,000 litres per hour through this tiny little inlet, I would imagine small fish are easily going to get stuck to that, but I've got something to rectify that. So, what I'm going to do with this particular one is remove this very coarse sponge, possibly use it later, and we're going to add the following to this. Coarse sponge with the bumpy bits on, so you've got good contact surface area. That's going to go into the bottom. We've then got a medium sponge, so that's medium density sponge, which is going to sit on top of that. And that's all we're going to do in the way of mechanical filtration for this particular part, because it works bottom up. If we put a fine pad on there, it's just going to get crushed by the media. And I think a medium pad after a coarse pad is going to filter out enough stuff. I don't think you're going to get any problems with water clarity because that is actually pretty fine. Not sure what the PPI is on these though. I think the coarse one is maybe 10 to 15 PPI. The medium one is possibly 30 to 40 PPI. 
I know you guys in America like your PPI ratings. In the UK and in Europe, we tend not to use them. It's just like coarse, medium, fine, you know. We're going to use that. That's little mesh bags of bio gravel. And the bio gravel is made from exactly the same stuff as the bio home, which is a collection of different size sand particles. That's fused together with powdered glass in a kiln. So it's a really hard media, but at the same time, it's really porous as well. Um, and the reason we're using that is to try and get a full cycle. If you've seen previous videos, I don't need to go into the full cycle, but it's basically looking to convert ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate, and nitrate to soluble nitrogen. So you don't have any problems in your tank. Most filters will quite easily cope with ammonia and nitrite. Nitrate is generally out of control, which is why people tend to regard hang on the back filters and canister filters as nitrate factories, but they don't have to be. If they're sized correctly and set up well, you can get a full cycle. We're going to put our course pad in the bottom. Like so. Medium pad above that. Voila. And then we're going to put five of these mesh bags in here. Now each one of these mesh bags holds approximately 350 grams, which is, ooh, what will that be? Two thirds of a pound in imperial measurements. And we're basically just gonna pack those in as neatly as we can to max out this area in here, to give us as much surface area as possible so the bacteria can do its job. There you go. Now, of course, you don't have to use media in mesh bags. You could put it in there loose. And like the box says, media of your choice. If you don't want to use Biohome, use whatever you want. I would suggest either a good quality ceramic ring, um, a good quality lava rock like pumice, which is pretty much what would ordinarily come with this. Go for a good quality one, though, not a hard, dense one like the Matrix. You can get that online. I I sell it on my website as well as all the bio home. Other people sell it as well. Now you could also go for the slightly more dense and less useful version of Lava Rock, which is the brown or red one. That one's called Scoria. You'll see that in a lot of DIY videos, especially from the US. You guys seem to like that. And really, if you're looking for a good quality media, I would suggest that you watch the video I put out quite a while ago called looking inside filter media. I'll put the link to that in the video description and also in the pinned comment because that is a really, really important video. I use a microscope to have a look inside different medias and we've got pumice in there, we've got the scoria, we've got some cheap Chinese stuff, I think we've got ceramic rings, we've got some of the different bio homes, all sorts of media. When you look inside the media, no matter what the manufacturer is saying about surface area and all that crap, you'll see if it's good or if it's bad. Some we take a look at is good, some is bad, some is excellent. You be the judge because eyes don't lie. That's what that video is all about. Okay, so we've got approximately 1.75 kilos of media in here which is quite an achievement because most hang on the back filters don't have much provision for good media. Obviously you could get more in if it was not in bags, if it was loosely packed. I've gone for bags just for easy removal, easy cleaning. Basically just take that out, put it in a bucket of water that you've drained from the tank, give it a squeeze, shake it around a bit, chuck it back in. So 1.75 kilos is approximately 3.85 pounds, so just under four pounds for you guys in the US. That's how much media you could get in there if it was in mesh bags. If it was in loose, you'd probably easily get two kilos of media in there, which is approximately 4.4 pounds. So that's the filter pretty much done. However, we can concentrate on two more areas, one of which is a bit of a concern, 
and the other one is a bit of a luxury. The one that was concerning me is that intake on the downpipe because that's going to create quite a draw towards there. A little fish possibly will get pulled in there. So what we're going to do with that is add a block of foam. Now this is a one from an internal filter that I showed in a previous video. I can't remember the name of it. It wasn't a particularly good one. But that one has already got a hole drilled in it. Which allows us to slot it over the end like that. And what that does, it diffuses the flow. So instead of it drawn through a limited amount of slits, it's actually drawn through every part of that foam. And that's going to reduce the pull, it's going to reduce the chances of any fry being stuck to it and killed. But if we want something a little bit bigger, we can go with something like that. That is more of the pond foam. And if you simply just roll that up, cable tie the bottom, and put some slightly looser cable ties halfway up and on the top you've got a nice big sponge with knobbly bits on a huge draw area so that is going to really protect your small fish I actually made a slightly smaller version of that just using cable ties on the top and tying them tight on the bottom just to close off that bottom slots on and there you've got a toilet brush or a nicely diffused intake and when you can see that getting clogged up take it off into a bucket of tank water give it a squeeze out stick it back on so now we've got a pre-filter which can be easily removed for cleaning that's going to prevent big particles getting into the pump possibly clogging it and slowing it down. It's also going to prevent quite a lot of the muck that would ordinarily just get spat straight into the bottom of our filter from ever entering the filter. And the other area which we can add a little bit of foam to is actually down the inside of here. I'll just take these out and I'll show you what I mean. There you go. Remember that space that directs the water? down here. Well we could use our super coarse foam in there just to catch a bit more muck. I'll cut that to size and I'll show you how it fits in. There you go that uses that very coarse foam in there. So when our water comes down it'll go through the foam into the bottom of the filter and then up through the tray. Uh, because this one is a lot more coarse than that one, this one should never get clogged. If it does, just take it out. We've got that there just as something else to catch a little bit of muck. If we've got the pre-filter on, we shouldn't get much muck in there at all. This was the luxury item. There's no real need for it. It just adds a little bit more mechanical and biological filtration. Okay, so the setup that we've employed here will apply to quite a lot of other hang on the back filters. So bear that in mind. Some may hold more, some may hold less. But most of them work in a similar way. Basically, they suck the water up, put it down, it rises up, comes back to the tank. As long as you've got mechanical filtration before your biological filtration, it's all good. So, might as well do a few facts and figures. Where's my calculator? There he is. So we managed to get 1.75 kilos of media in here, which is just short of four pounds. CKM say that this filter is suitable for tanks up to 400 litres, but remember in this series we're after a full cycle. So in reality, this particular one set up like this would be suitable to get a full cycle for a tank of about 175 to 200 litres which is approximately 46 US gallons. That's still pretty good for a hang on the back filter. Because remember, in this series, and in fact all my videos, we're talking about figures for a full cycle. The reduction of ammonia and nitrite, but also the reduction of nitrate. Now that's the aerobic side of the filtration. If 
for the ammonia and nitrite reduction, but it's also the anaerobic side of filtration for the nitrate reduction. That's why I've used that specific media. I did go through some other types that would be suitable for that. But as I say, you can use whatever you want. If you're not bothered about getting a full cycle and you just want zero ammonia and zero nitrite, you can put pretty much anything in there. You know, aerobic bacteria grows all over the place. It's the anaerobic bacteria that is the tricky one to get. That's why you need a specific filter media to provide the home for that bacteria. Right, I'll get this sent back to Chris now. Fully pimped up. And if you have a filter that you'd like me to take a look at that hasn't already been featured in this series, by all means get in touch. My contact details are in the video description and also in the pinned comment. And just phone up if you want a quick answer to any problem that you're having with your tank, your fish, your filters, whatever. Sometimes emails can take a couple of days for me to get back to you because I am stupidly busy. But phone call, if I hear it, I will answer it and you'll get a quick answer. Please feel free to share this on forums, Facebook groups, any site you want, anywhere where you think anybody might benefit from seeing this video or any of the other videos that I've put out. Thanks for watching, see you next time.